Now, ladies and gentlemen, it is my pleasure to introduce today's speaker, Mr. LaDainian Tomlinson. Thank you. Thank you. I like it. I love it. Okay. We have some Charger fans in the house. Now look, I, I know I know we're in Bronco country. I know we're in Bronco country. But I tell you, I never really had any problems with the Broncos when I played. <laughs> Uh, well, being here today is extraordinary, guys, for so many reasons. Uh, first honor of speaking at such an august institution. To individuals truly committed to excellence. Second, it provides me an opportunity to share with men and women of equal passion and commitment to integrity, my values. I chose to be here today because of how your values align with mine. Before going any further, I must first thank Lieutenant General Jay Siviril, Jim Knowlton, Major Jim George, Captain Zach Rasmussen, Dr. Greg Tate, Cadet First Class Carl Sapper, Cadet Third Class Edward Lopez. Thank you all uh, for your input in getting me here and all that you did uh, in helping us, my team, with the transition of getting me here. My goal today is to build on both the Air Force Academy motto, integrity first, service before self, excellence in all we do, and the theme of this year's symposium, ethics and respect for human dignity and introduce you to my visionary platform, Team America. In doing so, I hope to integrate all three into a blueprint for America. The principles we stand for are critically important and so eloquently identified in the Academy model, the Team America model, unity, diversity, inclusion, dignity, for all, and should of course also be applied to society at large. So now I will examine these principles and show you how they are not only important, but foundational to each and every one of us. Integrity and integration have the same root source. They mean wholeness. The integrity to be who we are capable of being, not only as individuals, but by extension, a nation. To be whole is to be in mind, body, spirit connection with self and source as fully as possible. Take a moment to actually think about what I am saying here. What does it mean to live a life connected to source to embodying the Air Force motto and the ethos of the theme of this year's symposium as integrally as possible in mind, body, spirit. Not just intellectually, but empirically at all times. My foundation, the value system I live by, is one I simply strive to embody, not only through what I do, but in who I am. Integrity and integration are part of what I call our moral compass. Trust it, it will always point due north. Service before self. I have a friend and mentor who has a mantra that states, surrender, serve, soar. He told me that the root of the word surrender means to yield or to give back. It does not mean to quit. It means to be in service. When we are in service to our highest ideals, we soar. Surrender, serve, soar 
also applies to serving our vision for ourselves, for our country, for God. Whatever we are called to do and be. My teacher goes on to say that it takes courage, heart, to embody this quality of leadership. One that is steadfastly committed to being an honorable leader for oneself and for others. This is, this is exactly what America needs today. Excellence in all we do. The underlying notion of the root of the word excellence is of physically rising above others, always striving not simply to do, but to be your best. When we strive for excellence, it supports us in honoring the best of who we are capable of being. Ethics. By the 17th century, the word ethics came to represent the science of morals. One definition is a system of moral values and principles. Respect. Respect is a feeling of deep admiration. Notice the meaning of deep admiration. Not simply admiration for once, for someone or something because of their ability, celebrity, economic status, or achievement. Rather, deep admiration for our fellow man. Continuing, what is it to be human? What is it to have respect for human dignity? Humanity simply refers to the human race. It does not distinguish, distinguish categories of humans. Synonyms are compassion, brotherly love, understanding, tolerance, tenderness, benevolence, goodness, magnanimity, generosity. Dignity comes from the Latin worthy. What an extraordinary society we will be if we all understood and inspired to embody these two simple words, human dignity for all. One reason I was selected to be here today was because I am considered a football champion. The root of the word champion means dazzlingly skilled in any field. <laughs> right? It's not a sports-centric term. Each and every one of you has the ability to be dazzlingly skilled and a champion, not only in your career, but in life. In sports, a champion can actually make a team play better. In business, a champion can actually make a company perform better. Well, in life, a champion can actually help society be better. Mario Angelou said when paraphrasing Luke 12, 48, to those who are given much, much is expected. I encourage each and every one of you to, who much, to whom much has been given to embody your inner champion to do and be your best for the betterment of mankind. So interrupting my narrative for a moment, on the theme of ethics and respect for human dignity, I would now share a moment from the last third of my Pro Football Hall of Fame speech, August 5th, 2017 because it speaks about a man who through his sacrifice and commitment to his own dignity left a profound legacy. That night, I said, if this was my last day on earth and this my final speech, this is the message I would leave with you, the story of a man I never met. My great, great, great grandfather George was brought here in chains on a slave ship from West Africa. His last name, Tomlinson, 
was given to him by the man who owned him. Tomlinson was the slave owner's last name. What extraordinary courage it must have taken for him to rebuild his life after the life he was born to was stolen from him. How did he reclaim his identity, his dignity, when he had no freedom to choose for himself? I went on to speak about my name that began with the man who owned my great-great-great-grandfather and is now proudly carried by me, my children, my extended family. Continuing, I said, my story is America's story. All our ancestors, unless we are American Indian, came from another country, another culture. Paraphrasing my final remarks, I said, football is a microcosm of America. All races, religions, and creeds, living, playing, competing, side by side. In this context, I advocate we become Team America. In sports, we are evaluated on our desire and ability and given a chance to compete. America is the land of opportunity. Let's not slam the door on those who may look or sound different from us. Rather, open it wide for those who have the belief in themselves that anything is possible, or willing to take whatever risk necessary and work hard enough to succeed. When we open the door for others to compete, we also fulfill the promise of one nation under God with liberty and justice for all. On America's team, let's not choose to be against one another. Let's choose to be for one another. My revered ancestor had no choice. We have one. I pray we dedicate ourselves to being the best team we can be working and living together, representing the highest ideals of mankind. Preparing for today created an opportunity to reflect even deeper on the challenges George was forced to face. How did he prevail? How did he not merely survive, but actually build as dignified and honorable a life as possible? I feel confident in stating that he must have achieved this because of the legacy he left among so many Tomlinsons. We are a family that has always been involved in the church, a family of pastors, deacons, community leaders, committed to giving back, struggling under the yoke of such harsh, dehumanizing conditions, his legacy to all of us was only achieved not by hating his slave owner, but by opening his heart with love and a belief in God. This is the legacy left to me by my founding forefather, George. It all began with him, and as I strive every day to put integrity first, service before self, excellence in all I do, combined with the respect for human dignity, I believe that I am standing on the magisterial shoulders of my great, great, great grandfather. In my years as a football player, I was, scrupulous, I was scrupulous, scrupulously committed to being the same integral person, the same leader, the same man, deeply connected to spirit, always striving to do whatever it took to be and do my best, whether on or off the field. This foundation began with the values taught me by my mother through the church and later accelerated through my time at Texas Christian University. In my senior year at TCU, I effectively began on my own leadership journey. One day, the head coach at the time, Dennis Francione, called me into the office. 
I was the returning national Russian champion and an All-American. Coach Francione asked me to sit down, and then he said, Ladanian, in order for all of us to take the next step and become a top 10 team in the country, this is my Dennis Francione voice, <laughs> you're going to have to take on more of a leadership role, not simply for yourself, but for your team. You already do a great job within yourself, but now you have to start to lead more demonstrably. It was in that moment that I began to really explore what leadership was. I examined it, examined it from myriad perspectives, moral, behavioral, and more. I reflected on it all the time. What did it mean to lead by example? I had endless internal conversations with myself and through this exploration, emerged into the leader I was capable of being. One who strives to walk his talk and embody his highest ideals as a teammate and as a leader. The same mentor I referenced earlier has also created an acrostic on leadership. The acrostic begins with the L representing leading by example. He states, let me be who I am for myself. Let me embody that which makes me responsible, respectful, authentic, and learn to claim that consciously each and every day of my life. Two examples for the letter E are empowered and ennobling, which state, when I lead by example from my highest self, it is not only empowering, it's ennobling. Through this, we inspire those around us and help them imbue their lives and ours with meaning. Time does not permit me to go further, but I do want to share one more th thought from this acrostic. The letter P has four interpretations but today I will speak about two of them, passionate and purposeful. When we are passionate, it enables us to live a purposeful life. I began today by saying the second reason I chose to be here is that I knew I would be speaking with men and women of equal passion. Our passion fuels our purpose. As I near the end of my talk, I'd like to ask all of you to think about how your motto, the Team America motto, and the theme of this year's symposium apply to America today. America today is at a moral crossroads. We are a divided nation. A nation divided is weakened. So more than ever, the principles you stand for must resound for all to hear. You are our current and future leaders, not just of the military, but of our global society. You come from all walks of life. You play a pivotal role in America's success. More than ever, it is imperative that our military service men and women not be biased, not criticized or stereotyped because of race, gender, or religious beliefs. In doing so, you can lead the way for all to follow. Through your integrity, through your leadership example, and commitment to human dignity, you will be a beacon of hope. I pray that we all aspire to achieve and fulfill our true destiny. Everything in life revolves only around two things, to choose to do something or to choose not to. As William Jennings Bryan said, destiny is not a matter of chance. 
It is a matter of choice. It is not a thing to be waited for. It is a thing to be achieved. We must choose to stand up for what is right. That is what integrity first compels us to do. The legendary football coach Vince Lombardi was an inspiring man as well as an inspiring coach. He said, any man's greatest hour, the moment that he holds most dear, is that moment when he has worked his heart out in a great cause and lies exhausted on the field of battle, victorious. Wow. Team America can ultimately only be successful when it is successful for all. To truly heal the gaping wounds that are being exposed today, to fulfill the vision and live by the credo of one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all, is only achievable by building strength through unity. To truly become Team America, we all have to work harder each and every day. Work our hearts out for our great cause. So when we place our heads on the pillow each night, we can acknowledge that day's victory, small or large. Then when we awaken the next morning, we resume our commitment to ourself and our vision. What an extraordinary society we will be when equality for all is actually our goal. When that becomes the case, we will not lie exhausted on the field of battle victorious. We will stand exhilarated, linking arms with our brethren, no matter race, color, or creed. That is America. That is the victory I wish for us all. Thank you very much. God bless you, and God bless the United States of America.